stick in the mud. The manager was as good as his word, Scholar, he continued. I came home from the works with six wheels and a cab. A cab is the latest thing for engines, he told me. I hope it will cheer you up after your disappointment. Renias chuckled. It cheered him up too much. And all silly coaches made him worse. Such a handsome engine, they tittered. Six wheels and a cab, so distinguished, my dears, it's a pleasure to see him. He soon got too big for his wheels. Scarlowy smiled ruefully. Oh, he did too, he said. Go on, Renias. He boasted about his cab till I was tired, said Renias. You should get one like me and be up to date, he would say. No, thank you. You look like a snail with that house on your back. You don't go much faster either. Slow am I, let me tell you. Who was late three times last week? Oh, it's no use talking. You're just an old stick in the mud. He called me more names and we quarreled. We ended up back to back, not speaking. It went on for days and days. One dark Monday morning, Scar Lowy had to take the workman's train to the quarry. It had rained for three days. You always pick on me for wet days, he complained. You, said Mr. Bobby... I've got a cab to keep us dry. Come on. Scar Lewis slipped and snorted on the damp rails. He began to wonder if cabs were worth it. An hour later, I was warming up when Scar Lewis' guard came coasting down in an empty truck. He stopped by our shed. There's a landslide beyond the tunnel, he said. Scar Lewis will run into it. He's stuck. Show a wheel, Renius. Look lively. I'm sorry, Mr. Peter, sir. But that Scarlo is too swanky. He says I must stick in the mud. He can jolly well stick in the mud himself. It serves him right. That went on my driver. There's poor Mr. Bobby and the quarry men. Does it serve them right too? The guard says the mud's like treacle. Oh dear, I said. That will never do. We must save them before they get sucked in. And off we puffed with two trucks and some workmen. Things weren't too bad after all. The men had partly cleared the line and had levered Scarlowe back. He was hissing and grumbling dreadfully, but we didn't listen to him. We cleared the rest of the line and I pushed Scarlowe out of the way before taking the quarryman to work. Mr. Bobby cleaned and oiled his wheels in motion, so when I returned with the coaches, I could help him back to the shed. I'm sorry I was swanky, he said at last. Thank you for helping me. Not at all, I said, but I was still cross. Then Scarlowe began to laugh. I'm not stick in the mud after all, he gurgled helplessly. Not you. I laughed too. I couldn't help it. He looked so funny. We were laughing when the cleaners came. We were still laughing when they left. Poor engines, they said, tapping their foreheads. But we weren't mad. We'd learnt sense. And we've been firm friends ever since. It was nearly dark. The listeners stirred and stretched. Thank you, Scarlowe and Renius, they said. Now you've told us about the old days, we can give you both a splendid birthday next week. <laughs> <laughs>